1340-96.5 KVGC. Let's check out the news for a Friday. It's the 24th day of April for 2020. Well, the Plymouth City Council approved a program to defer the city's hotel tax in an effort to aid the hospitality business hurt by COVID-19. Meeting last night by teleconference, the Plymouth City Council approved an emergency policy that will allow hotels in the town to delay paying their transient occupancy tax until the emergency has passed. I'm sorry. Are you okay, J.D.? J.D. tripped on the telephone wire there. Are you okay? The whole headphone thing. Oh, everything came down? Yeah. Oh. Set of headphones hanging here that hooked my phone. All right. You okay? God, you almost took the monitor off the thing and everything. You Ooh, okay, though, right? My hip's out of socket. <laughs> I'm calling and I can't get up. Workman's comp. Workman's <laughs> comp. So, Anyway, COVID-19 has hurt the hospitality uh, establishments both in the county as uh, health officials have placed a ban on all recreational travel and hotel stays in an effort to contain the virus. Now, the transient uh, occupancy tax is 10% of a hotel room stay in Plymouth. Council also last night discussed a program to uh, offer either zero-interest loans or grants from either community block grant funds or transient occupancy taxes collected from previous years. As drafted, these loans would be up to $5,000 each and would be used for businesses to keep their employees on the payroll during the COVID-19 emergency. And the council rejected a proposal last night for a wireless company to pay the city $290,000 to take control of leasing at a cell phone tower on city-owned property. Currently, the city leases out the land for a cell tower for $1,100 a month, pardon me, make that $1,600 a month, with several council members calling this offer suspicious. Well, the CHP reported a fatal auto accident late yesterday in the West Point area. The solo vehicle collision occurred just before 5.30 on Winton Road near the Lily Gap Road intersection, south of 26 and southwest of Wilson Lake. When CHP and emergency crews arrived, they discovered a man lying in the road and began CPR immediately. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. His name has not been released, pending notification of family. Now, CHP has released further details on exactly, or excuse me, hasn't released any further detail on exactly what caused the crash, which remains under investigation. And the Amador County Public Health Department confirms an additional lab-confirmed COVID-19 case launching an additional contact investigation yesterday. This individual was a temporary resident within Amador County with a permanent address in Los Angeles County. Now the contact investigation continues to be underway with participation from multiple jurisdictions. Given that this person's permanent address is outside the county, this positive will not be included in the total case count for Amador. The EOC will continue to support public health with their investigation. So Amador County's case remains at 8 for male, for female. Well, Calaveras County confirms the 13th case of COVID-19. According to the county's public health department, this case, an older adult female from West Point. She shares a household with an already confirmed case and has made no contact with the general public during the period of infection. Now, commenting on the case, Dr. Dean Kaleda said, quote, it is important for people to continue to do their part to help reduce their risk to COVID-19 and remind everyone in your home to do the same. These actions are especially important for families with members at high risk for severe illness. Now, currently, the number for Calaveras, 13 positive COVID-19 cases, 9 recoveries, no deaths. Now, of those numbers, one is under 17, four in between 18 and 49, one between 50 and 64, seven are older than 65. Now, looking at cases by gender, eight are female, five are male. Currently, the county's public health department has recovered over 340 test results. For more info, visit the Calaveras Public Health online. And related to COVID-19... 
The Republican leader of the California Senate is asking Governor Newsom to give local governments in areas more minimally impacted by the number of cases the discretion and flexibility to reopen business. Senator Shannon Grove of Bakersfield made the request in a letter to the governor saying California's economic engine is strengthened by our small businesses, farmers, ranchers, energy workers, and more. Now, the Amador County Board of Supervisors will discuss adopting a similar letter at this coming Tuesday's meeting. The board is set to hear from business owners who were ordered to close their doors over a month ago due to COVID-19 mitigation measures and on the current state of small business in Amador County. Now, if approved, the supervisors will join other counties and cities in our region in urging the governor to allow local flexibility in reopening businesses. Governor Newsom began lifting some restrictions on non-essential medical services earlier in the week and indicated that the state needs to increase its test capacity before further reducing the stay-at-home restrictions. And firefighter training taking place over the next couple weeks near 26 in Hogan Dam Road. Cal Fire Heavy Fire Equipment Operating Academy will conduct training ahead of the coming fire season. A total of 500 acres within the New Hogan Veg Management Plan will be treated as part of the work. Now, mostly the training will run from 7.30 in the morning until 5 in the evening, Monday through Friday, but some days until 10 p.m. The public may see dust and hear heavy equipment through May 8. And we want to remind you again, we'll be talking about this uh, pretty much during every newscast, and we have actually some announcements recorded by Judge Hermanson, D.A. Reby, and Sheriff Ryan talking about the uh, number of Amador agencies teaming up for a food drive to benefit the Interfaith Food Bank on the 28th and 29th of next week from 9 to 3 daily. The Amador County Superior Court on Argonaut Lane, also Pokerville Market in Plymouth, the Ion Police Department, and City Hall in Sutter Creek will all have uh, donation bins where you can drop off food. Also, if you don't care to drop off food, Beth Stanton from the Interfaith Food Bank tells us that money can go farther. One dollar can go farther in feeding a family than one can of green beans can. So if you would prefer to donate money, do so as well. For more information on this, you can visit the Interfaith Food Bank website. And that, my friends, is a look at local news on a gold country. Friday morning on the eve of J.D.'s birthday. From the KVGC News Center, I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather, 24 hours a day to visit our website at kvgcradio.com.